Today we're talking about the top 10 worst selling vehicles of 2024. Some of the vehicles here in 2024 must totally suck, but some being slow movers are a bit surprising too. You can comment below to tell us why you think some of these vehicles aren't moving. Some have a combination of excellent performance, good reliability, and even high owner satisfaction, yet they haven't been selling in this market. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, and across the way is the amazing Elizabeth. Thanks, Kevin. Well, that means if something on this list appeals to you, a good deal could be had out there on these vehicles. If you've been following our show for some time now, you're aware that we have a hassle-free car buying service, and the June report is in, and this will blow you away, my friends. Viewers using our hassle-free car buying service averaged $4,303 per person last month saved. Full disclosure here, the savings were less for the guy looking for the 2024 Toyota Corolla and a lot more for other types of vehicles. But what are your thoughts, Kevin? Well, here's the thing. Even on deals like the Corolla, where there is less money to be saved, with our hassle-free car buying service, everyone saves a minimum of double the fee, even on the tough-to-get cars. And most, as you can see, save an average of over 4000 saving four times the fee. By the way, I want to take this opportunity to comment on the car concierge service offered by the father and son combo here on YouTube. Right on their website, it says, if you use their service and pay $9.99, you'll save $9.99 guaranteed. That's terrible, terrible, and I would be embarrassed to have a service like that. $9.99 in savings is equal to the cost of the service. With no real savings at all, why would anyone want to go that route? This seems to point to a clear fact that either they or their staff really suck at negotiating with dealers, or there's something more sinister going on. They could be double-dipping on their deals. Knowing how they operate is highly likely they are working both sides of the deal. Yeah. Charging the dealer for a referral and then being paid off by both the buyer and the dealer. When you take a fee from the dealer for a deal, you certainly can't take negotiations to an intense level that benefits the car buyer. I actually spoke to a dealer who said he declined to work with them because they wanted money from him to bring him a client. Yeah. And they were charging the buyer too. He thought it was unethical and he said, no thanks. My friends, that's being very deceptive and something we would never do. Sorry, I've been wanting to say that for some <laughs> time now. The Homework Guy team works for you and you only. Now, onto these worst selling cars. It could be their style, it could be their size, the type, the age of the design, possibly recalls or reliability issues. But I do think some are worth a second look, even though very few people have actually bought them. Right. It's always worth doing your homework to ask exactly why they didn't sell and see if it's an opportunity for you to get a good deal or take a pass like the others did. Maybe there simply weren't any rebates early on in the selling season. Now, the list we're sharing today will exclude slow selling, high end luxury models and EVs because those numbers are usually lower anyway and are less typical when compared to the overall car market. You may disagree with our reasons, but you can't argue with the numbers. This is actual sales data compiled for your homework purposes. If you own one of these vehicles or have taken a ride in one, we'd love to hear your comments. I was reading a lot of Reddit reviews, Kevin, but I'll say this. It depends on what thread you're on if you're getting a negative or positive answer on vehicles. So true. Well, first up is the Dodge Hornet. You might not want to get stung by one of these car deals. <laughs> oh, cute. The day's supply currently sits at 384 days. That means based on the rate of sale so far, they have more than a year's worth already sitting on the lot. Ooh. Someone better call production and tell them to slow down or <laughs> take some time off. Ouch. There are 16,000 Dodge Hornets for sale in the U.S., but only 1,900 have sold in the last 45 days. And it's not the price of 42000 that's stopping them from selling because that's right about average for a new car. It must be mechanical issues. If you happen to be driving a Hornet, we'd love to hear from you and how it's going for you. For sure. Another Stellantis product, the Jeep Gladiator, has 225 days supply. They have a decent price point of $53,000, higher than average but not crazy. There are 26,000 Gladiators for sale, but only 5,300 have sold in the last 45 days. I found that a Gladiator retains 70% of its value after five years. The only thing that performs better than that are the Toyotas at 75%. Interesting. Meanwhile, the Ram 3500 has a 224-day supply. There are 19,000 for sale, and only 3,800 have sold in the last 45 days. With a price point at 79,000, 
These big pickups are being bought and used mostly by ranchers, farmers, construction crews, etc. You can see why these haven't sold. It's the overall crunch on the economy, hurting the self-employed and small businessmen. No mystery there. Businesses are hurting, hoping the vehicles will last another year or much more. Here's a surprising one, the 24 Nissan Titan. There are only 5,700 units for sale, and only 847 people have taken one home in the last 45 days. Unlike the big three pickups, the Nissan Titan has never offered a range of powertrain options. The Nissan Titan is a decent, but not impressive, full-size pickup truck. It has a good-sized V8 engine and can tow and haul more than most people are likely to need. It's a comfortable ride and offers a generous list of standard features, also major points in its favor. But with these few buyers, you have to ask yourself, who is the niche buyer for a Nissan Titan? Next up on the worst-selling cars list is the Chevy Traverse SUV. They have a 290-day supply, selling 1,700 units out of the 11,000 they have in stock. Some people are saying the cabin feels cheap, that the fuel economy isn't high enough, and even that the steering just doesn't respond as quickly as they'd hoped. Mm. With a lot of competition in the midsize SUV lane, the Chevy Traverse may need to step it up a notch. With that said, if you test drive a Traverse and absolutely love it, it looks like 4% off MSRP is the national average. Keep that in mind. For the record, Stuart would absolutely kill it on a vehicle like this. <laughs> For sure. Another Jeep, the Wagoneer, has 9,800 units for sale, and they've sold 1,700 in the last 45 days, putting the Wagoneer's day supply at 258 days. Jeep has had difficulty selling cars in 2024 due to high inventory and high prices. Well, they had such high production. This model is priced at 64000 which is a fair bit more than the Kia Telluride and Hyundai Palisade, to name a couple. However, some say the 24 Jeep Wagoneer is a good choice for families because of its spacious cabin and cargo space. Good size mm. SUV. That's right. Reviews also note that the Wagoneer has a twin turbocharged 3.0 liter six cylinder engine that produces 420 horsepower and can accelerate from zero to 60 in just under seven seconds. Sounds like the kids in the back would be yelling, Wee! <laughs> now, we brought up the Lincoln Navigator in our previous show being deeply discounted. But it's no mystery why this rig isn't selling. With a price tag over $100,000, the 7,800 units are sitting on dealer lots, having sold only 1,400 in the last 45 days. This vehicle needs some huge discounts to move. Huge. The Ford Ranger, being the longtime seller that it is, is also on the worst selling list for this year. The price point is actually right around the national average, $45,000. Currently, there are about 5,000 Rangers for sale, and only 526 have sold in the last 45 days. Now, there were recalls on the Ranger, and I've seen reports that the Ranger went on sale before they even finished production. In my opinion, it's just too small of a truck to be selling for $45,000. Totally agree. Another vehicle that was a complete swing and a miss, the yeah. Ford Mustang Mach-E is, well, an easy one to add to this list. The price point is 53000 and they have about 400 days supply Ooh, of units. Ouch. Let's face it. I don't think anyone was ready to mix muscle car with EV. So using the Mustang name was a cheap attempt by Ford to make it look cool. It didn't fly with anyone. Yeah, same here. Okay, the last one for us today is a Subaru Solterra. There are about 4,000 for sale with 488 being sold in the last 45 days. I don't think in general that Subaru gets enough good press when the other Japanese brands overshadow them. Subaru cars are known for being reliable, safe, and value-packed. They also have a reputation for high-performance driving and being great handling in any kind of weather. When I was living in a mountain estate, I noticed that many people had a Subaru. They're reliable, all-wheel drive vehicles, and they were easy to get parts for and easy to have serviced. A vehicle's strengths and weaknesses can only be discovered when you are behind the wheel. So, like always, we always advise go test drive before making any decisions. Other research to do is to hit the NHTSA website to look at recalls, realcartips.com to research rebates, and our website, thehomeworkguy.com, to research best techniques for negotiating or getting help getting your car deal done. Consider visiting our website, thehomeworkguy.com, and make even a minimal investment toward the success of your car deal by getting our new book, Buy Smart, Drive Confidently. It's just twelve ninety nine. Our viewers and readers are saying that the book helps them organize their thoughts and structures the car buying process in a way that saves them far more than the measly 13 bucks it takes to buy it. And for many people that I've done direct phone calls with and coached through the process, those that bought the book were far better prepared to buy a car 
than those that had not. And then you can also get Elizabeth's direct assistance via the help desk style memberships, $24.99 for direct email help and $49.99 for faster help by text. That includes 30 days of black book values, contract reviews, and general good car buying advice. If you want to talk directly to me, you can ask all of your questions during a 45-minute phone call we have available for just $99. I can talk you through any strategy for you to do this on your own, or we can talk about how you can get hooked up with Stuart and our hassle-free car buying process, saving you thousands of dollars and a ton of headaches. Either way, no problem. Stuart is our in-house homework guy style negotiator, and yes, he can do everything for you, and I mean everything. Stuart beats the dealers because he negotiates OTD style, and per month he does more than three times the volume of car deals that the typical good car salesman does. His experience beats theirs every time on either new or used cars, and it doesn't matter where you live. Put his experience in your corner and have our team go to work for you. Our members who have used our hassle-free car buying service say that with Stuart's help, it was the easiest route they had ever gone to buying a car, and that's the way we want to keep it. We are ecstatic that we've saved our viewers who hired Stuart a total of $86,000 just last month. I can't wait to see what he does in July. We are ecstatic that we have saved our viewers who hired Stuart an average of $4,300 just last month. I can't wait to see what he does in July because he just keeps getting better. Yes. If you want to be part of the epic money-saving, hassle-free car buying process, you can read the details on our website and sign up for the $99 phone call to get the ball rolling. And remember, veterans and service members save 200 bucks. It's our way of saying thank you for your service. Thank you. Also, if you never want to miss an upcoming show while you're visiting on our website, sign up for show notifications directly from us by clicking on the yellow button for content notifications. I send out an email for each new show, which you can check out yourself and forward to family and friends. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. And to our longtime followers out there, you guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off on behalf of the amazing Elizabeth and the Homework Guy team. God bless you all. Thanks for listening.